We're about to solve this separable differential equation. It is in a section of partial fractions, and that is because it will turn into partial fractions. We need to separate the differential, which means we need to multiply both sides by dt. So the dt will move over and be 9dt. And we've got to move the t's to the other side, so we're going to divide both sides by that polynomial. So we're going to be left with only dx on the left, and then we're going to have 9 divided by, and you can write the dt up here, divided by 2t cubed minus 2t squared plus t minus 1. Make sure your t and your plus don't look alike. Or you're going to have some problems. From here, we now need to factor this, hopefully down to linear factors. How do we factor a cubic? There's several ways to do it. You can use the rational zero theorem and find a zero, then divide by the factor that corresponds to, and then either repeat that again or just factor the quadratic. Or you can try factor by grouping. I'm sure there's other ways to do it, but those are just the two that came to my mind. Now factor by grouping, you want to think about grouping up those two terms and the last two terms. First two terms, I can factor out 2t squared. And what I'm left with is t minus 1 plus, there's in this case, there's nothing to factor out of the t minus 1. But I'm just going to write it in parentheses to group it up. Now from here, look at that. We have a t minus 1 and a t minus 1. We're going to factor that out. But there's a 2t squared in front of the first one. There's nothing in front of this one. So I'm just going to write 1 in front of it. All right, when we factor, we're now going to have 2t squared plus 1 times t minus 1. 90t in the numerator and dx on the left. All right, from here, this 2t squared plus 1, well, that's already uh, factored as good as it's going to get over the real numbers. You could set it equal to 0 if you really wanted to. And if you really want to be sure you can't factor it, I'm going to solve this for t. Subtract 1 on both sides, divide by 2, take a square root. And what is the problem with this right here? Well, these two solutions are complex. They are not real because it's a square root of a negative. And we're going to keep it real in calculus, so we're going to... Uh, just use the fact that this polynomial is irreducible over the real numbers. So now we have to decompose this fraction. Now that 9 is not really important. You can easily just bring the 9 out front. And of course we're going to integrate both sides. Left side is x. I'm crushing it. Constant can go on either side. I'll just write it on the left side. And what we're going to do next is decompose this. We still have some pretty serious work to do after the partial fraction decomposition, so I'm going to leave quite a bit of space here. So again, I got rid of that 9. I just brought it outside. If you want to keep it around, that's fine. You'll just get 9 times what I get. All right, so we're going to decompose this. 2t squared plus 1 plus t minus 1. All right, I'm not covering everything about decomposing fractions, but you get one term for each factor, basically. Uh, and above each factor, you have a generic polynomial of one degree lower. So I had degree 2 here uh, from the square. And so above it is a linear polynomial, degree 1. Here I have degree 1 polynomial, so above it is a degree 0, which would be a constant. And if you really don't want to use the letter C to mean two different things, because these are not the same C's, you could use the letter D. Sometimes you want to avoid that in calculus class, but we'll just use it here. All right, how do you solve for A, B, and D? You multiply everything by all the denominators. So left side just cancels out to 1. Right side, ax plus b times t minus 1 plus 
d times 2t squared plus 1. Two ways to figure out the a, b, and d constants. You can plug in t values or you can match coefficients. I see a very easy t value to plug in. Let t equal 1 because that's going to zero this out. So when t is 1, there's no t's on the left side, but there could be in other decompositions, so just be aware of that. ax plus b times 0 is 0, plus d times, now t is 1, so we have 2 times 1 squared. I'm just going to write 2 plus 1, so 1 equals 3d, d equals 1 third. Maybe I should have kept that 9 around. And D would have been 3. Yeah, whatever. I already made a decision. Let's go for it. Okay, so I'm going to plug in that uh, 1 third in for D right there. And this, I'll do it in the next step. I do need to distribute the AX plus B. So it's one third times two t squared plus one third times one. Now we're gonna bring everything uh, that's not unknown, that's not multiplied by this ax plus b to the left side. All right, so we have negative two thirds t squared minus a third plus one, or one minus a third, which is positive two thirds equals ax plus b. I do need to multiply this out here to foil this out. Let's do that right now. Where did x come from? We were working with t's. There we go. Back to t land. All right. So a t times t is a t squared. So that tells me right there what a is. All right, a t squared. Outside is minus a t. Inside is plus b t. And b times negative 1 is negative b. And actually, right here, matching coefficients. Normally, you would sort by powers of t, or at powers of x. It's the usual variable. So you see the squared term the first degree term and the zero degree term. Now we're gonna match coefficients. So I'll go in orange. I'm matching those two. In front of t squared, negative two thirds has to equal a. These coefficients have to be equal because they're both in front of the square, uh, t squared. Now there is no t to the first power on the left, which means there's zero in front of t, and that equals negative a plus b. Last up, constant, two thirds is equal to negative b. And, well, right here, that's kind of weird, they're both negative two thirds, but, oh well. Uh, so negative two thirds is b. All right, we have our a, our b, and then somewhere up here, I'll circle it, we should have our d value. d is one third. All right, so d is one third, a and b are negative two thirds. If you make one mistake, you're gonna get the answer wrong. So don't make any mistakes. That should have been a plus. All right. So I'm going to just copy that up here. And A and B were negative two thirds. Yup. Negative two thirds over two T squared minus plus one plus one third over T minus one DT. And I think we might need more room for calculus here. All right, x plus c equals, 
I could distribute the 9 now to get rid of fractions. Uh, and 9 times negative 2 thirds is negative 6. Yeah, negative 6. Integral 1 over 2t squared plus 1 dt plus 9 times the third is 3. Integral 1 over t minus 1 dt. All right, getting there slowly but surely. If it wasn't for that stupid 2, that right there would be uh, tan inverse, but that stupid 2 is there. So there's a few ways to deal with it. Let's push it into the square. So you could write it as square root 2 times t whole thing squared. And remember, when you square a product, you square each of those. So this is square root 2 squared, which is 2, times t squared. That's 2t squared, and that's what we wanted. All right, why did I do this? We're ready for a u sub. And we can let square root 2t equal u. So square root 2 dt equals du. And there is no square root 2. So dt is 1 over square root 2 du. Do not rationalize ever. Um, I know if you're one of my students, you don't. But if you're not one of my students, don't do it. No point. Unless you're told to. All right. Still have the x plus c. Don't forget about that. All right. So we have negative 6 over square root 2 integral 1 over u squared plus 1 du. Hopefully that's right. Seems like it. All right, over here, the other one, you can just, you could do a u sub, but hopefully you've done enough of these. At this point in calculus, you've hopefully done enough of these. You know this is just ln t minus 1. We don't need the plus constant because we've already accounted for it. And I'm going to box that over, get that away. x plus c equals negative 6 over root 2. All right, this antiderivative. I hope it's arctangent. Tangent inverse u, not tangent inverse t, plus 3ln t minus 1. Okay, almost done. x plus c equals negative 6 halves tan inverse of u is square root 2t, 3ln t minus 1. All right, they did give us an initial condition which should give us the value of c. So let's go back up. All right, now, uh, so we do have the initial condition here, but this should be, so the value, 4x as a function of t. So 4x, so x is gonna be f of t. So that's just what that means which means we need x on one side and everything else on the other side. We almost have that. We just left the c on the wrong side. No big deal. Uh, I'm going to subtract the c. Wait, but you added the c. I did add the c to both sides. Uh, it's a constant, so it doesn't matter. You could, if you really want to, you could definitely write minus c. Uh, it's a constant. Don't know if it's positive or negative. When we plug in the initial value, we will discover whether it's positive or negative. All right, last thing we're going to do, I won't actually plug it all in and get the answer, but x of 2 equals 0. What does that mean? This right here, x of t is equal to the x value. So 2 is the t value, 0 is the x value. That's what this means right here. So t is 2, x is 0. And just plug all that in. 0 equals t is 2. So wherever you see t, you're going to plug in 2. Oh, ln of 1, which is 0. So that whole term will disappear because it's ln of 2 minus 1. Uh, the other t, I think I said I was not going to do this, but it's hard to start do, stop doing problems when you're on a roll. Square root 2 times 2. Uh, that's 2 to the half times 2 to the first, which is 2 to the 3 halves power. 
uh, and of course, yeah, minus C. So C, you just add this stuff to the other side. Uh, you're going to get some crazy decimal, uh, and that is your C value, or I guess you can just leave it like this right here. Yeah, there's no reason to turn it into a decimal. Yep, so C, I'm going to do something horrible. No, you shouldn't. I'm not going to give you bad habits. Here's what I wasn't going to do. But no, actually, I should have had a negative sign. But you're not going to do that, and I'm not going to do that. So we get, you could add C to the other side. There's several ways to do it. Let's just add C to the other side. Then I'll just copy this down. All right, so that's C. You're then going to plug that C value into here. And that will be your final answer. I'm running out of room, and this video is long enough. So that is how to solve this initial value differential equation.